Hey, it's Chuck today. Let's get it. And welcome in. The running back room looks tremendous at Ohio State this year. With Travian Henderson, Quinchon Judkins, freshman sensation to be, James Peoples, freshman Sam Williams Dixon, and walk on that everybody loves, TC Caffey. But next year, most likely Quinchon Judkins is headed to the NFL along with Travian Henderson, which leaves the room with two second year guys in Peoples and Sam Williams Dixon and TC Caffey. And because of this, the Buckeyes are trying to get a three man running back class for the class of 25. With running back coach Tony Alford leaving a few months ago and coach Carlos Lachlan coming in from Oregon to take over as the running back coach. There's been a surprising amount of stability as far as the targets that the Buckeyes are after. Bo Jackson of Villa Angeles St. Joe's up in Cleveland, number four running back in the class, always high on the Buckeyes' priority list, as was Jordan Davison out of Santa Ana, California at Modern Day High School, the number 13 back in the class per 247. And at this point, the Buckeyes are still very much in the race for both of those guys, with several people already predicting Jordan Davison in the class. Carlos Lachlan has made several contingency offers, should either of them not work out. He had a good relationship with Jordan Davison when he was up at Oregon recruiting him. And Bo Jackson really loves Ohio State, though he's taken some officials to Georgia and Alabama. We'll see how it goes. But Lachlan's working very hard on developing a relationship with him. And things are looking pretty good. It was another superstar running back in Northeast Ohio, Marquise Davis, at Cleveland Heights, who kind of set the ball rolling for a guy we're going to talk about today. Marquise Davis had a good relationship with former Buckeye running back coach Tony Alford. And when Alford left and went to Michigan, Davis was essentially out on Ohio State. He never really gave Lachlan a chance to get involved. He flirted with Michigan a little bit and thought about going up there with uh, Tony Alford, but he eventually committed to Kentucky. Shortly after that, we found out that Coach Carlos Lachlan had offered the running back that was committed to Kentucky, Isaiah West. And my original thought was this must be Lachlan offering the third back in the class. Always tough to get a three-man class. You generally are getting you know, two guys that might be ready to go and then a developmental guy. And I figured that's what this guy was. Then I started looking into Isaiah West, and he is anything but a developmental back. 5'10", 210 with a 34-inch vertical and a 10-foot, 2-inch broad jump. A workhorse running back at St. Joe's Prep in Philadelphia playing some of the toughest competition. <laughs> State champions last year lost one game by three points to the IMG traveling all-star team. Amazing power for his size. The first guy never brings him down, and he takes a lot of pride in that. Excellent in pass protection, soft hands out of the backfield. He's got all the physical tools. This guy has everything it takes to be a stud running back at an Ohio State-level program. Carlos Lachlan knows it, and that's why he's after him so hard. When I first watched West, I got really fired up. I wasn't expecting what I saw. First off, it's an incredibly long highlight film, and that's always a good sign to begin with. But this guy's incredible. You want to talk about tough, hard to bring down? I'm going to show it to you. But in the few weeks I've been talking to him, what's most clear about him is this guy wants it bad. He's incredibly enthused about an offer from Ohio State. He wants to work hard every day. He loves the sport. He loves the gym. He's got all the tools and all the drive to do it. So let's watch a little bit of Isaiah West, and you can get a feel of why I like him so much. And hopefully we're talking to the next Buckeye. Yo, that was sick. Sticks his foot in the ground one way, then right back the other way. Change a direction like that, you don't see often in a guy this big. That's like jitterbug stuff. Aside from West's physicality, right here, I love the most. It's the suddenness. From the 35 to the 45, 47, it's like, bam, max speed like that. This one's particularly entertaining. But seriously, his base is so strong, you just can't bring him down easy. And he's got such incredible balance when he's hit. 
Soft hands out of the backfield. We're going to break two tackles right off the rip. Another one later on down the field. And somehow stay in bounds here. It's totally elite. In the gallop into the end zone for good measure. Excited as he should be. Another one making the catch here and then just hitting the Jets immediately. And this, we're going to see a lot. Six, seven, eight guys just surrounding him and, and nobody can bring him to the ground. And it'll take four on this particular play. Lowers the boom, delivers the blow when he needs to. Doesn't always. He'll run around you if he can get more yards that way. But if he needs to go through you to pick up that extra three, he'll do it. And you're definitely not going to want to stand in the way of the goal line. That's for sure. And another one with three dudes, hands on him, keeping his balance as usual. The balance is just tremendous. Again, hit at the line, keeps his balance, knocks off the tackler, and then hits up the top speed immediately. And you can really see that burst from this angle where he just makes a one cut straight up the gut. All right, our guy's proven his point. He's the truth, no doubt about it. The physicality we've been missing for a while. I can't wait to get it back in the running back room. We know Carlos Lachlan wants it in the running back room. Let's get to the interview. Isaiah West. Thanks so much for joining me, bud. I appreciate you. It's good to be here. Let's start here. So you played for St. Joe's Prep in Philadelphia, obviously a football powerhouse. Um, you guys draw students from all over the place, not just Philadelphia. Where are you from? I'm from South Jersey, about 30 oh. minutes over the bridge. Okay. Okay. What's your family life like? Got any siblings? Yeah, I got two older brothers. One actually just turned 22 a couple of days ago. And then awesome. I got one little sister. So when you're playing at a high school like St. Joe's that has uh, a couple graduates like Marvin Harrison and Kyle McCord, who are starting at Ohio State. What's that like in high school? Like, you guys got two alumni that are playing at one of the biggest schools in the country. Are you guys all talking about that? Are you all Buckeye fans? All the time. I and mean, that's that's our family right there. They're staple guys for us. Everybody, every receiver is trying to be the next Marv. Every quarterback is trying to be the next Kyle. So it's, it's a big thing for us. That's awesome. That's awesome. Keenan Nelson uh, is a, uh, a guy the Buckeyes just got. Uh, transfer from South Carolina. I saw that he was a St. Joe's grad too. Are you familiar with him? Yes, I was a teammate too, with him my freshman year, and I, I trained with him too. We got the same track coach. So when I came when I came up on my visit, he was there, and I was like, "Dang, why you ain't say nothing? Man? I, I didn't even know he was going." Oh, that's awesome! That's awesome. So last year, you guys went thirteen and one, won the state championship. You only lost one game by three points to the IMG traveling all-star team. Pretty incredible. How's the team looking going into this year? Oh, we're going to be just fine this year. Obviously, we lost a, a great class in that class of 2024, and those guys are going to go on and do great things at the next level. But one thing I know about the prep is we won't, re won't rebuild or reload, so we're going to be just fine. The prep, that's what you guys call it. I read that, huh? <laughs> the prep. Yeah. I like that. That's a pretty slick nickname. Uh I saw that you won the best running back award at a Baltimore Under Armour camp last spring. Have you been active on the camp circuit? Honestly, not at all. The UA camp does something that Demetric, he weren't, he invited me to, and I saw it, and I figured, all right, that's good competition. Let's go out there and compete. Ended up being a good day for me. Yeah, you look fantastic. I kind of want to get into the recruiting process with you. Um, I've been a recruiting dork for a long time. And when I look at your measurables and when I look at your tape, I feel like you've been incredibly underrated um, by three of the four recruiting services. I didn't know about you until Ohio State offered you. What is your opinion on kind of the recruiting services and, and, and have you, do you feel like you've been underrated, overlooked? I mean, I don't really see it that way. I don't really look at the stars or the rankings or anything like that. I feel like the people that need to find me, they found me. And I'm blessed to have the opportunity and I'm going to make the most of it. Absolutely. I feel like when you were offered, um, you know, it was kind of the first time that I really heard about you, started reading about you. And 
I immediately, after I watched you, I kind of felt like I, I got a secret. Like I couldn't wait to come on the show and play your clips and talk about you. Um, when you got that offer, uh, I sent the video of you to an FCS coach friend of mine and he was just blown away. Top tier acceleration, great vision and balance. Uh, Curtis Barton was his comparison. Tell me, what do you feel like your strengths are as a running back? Yeah, I would say definitely my contact balance. Very rarely am I going to be getting brought down by the first person, if ever. You know, that's something I pride myself in. I pride myself in falling forward, always getting positive yards. And being able to cut up a defense, I feel like my vision, I'm very precisive. I know where the hole is going to be before the ball is even snapped most of the time. So. Is that just an innate ability for you? Oh, no, that's something that we work on. Something that my, me and my running back coach, we work on every day, man. Yeah. Um, when you get hit after contact, you your acceleration back to top speed is really, really elite. And as far as the contact, which you do pride yourself on, you're not just a hammerhead that seeks out contact. You, 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 con you, you make contact when necessary to get that extra three yards. It's really impressive. I read an article about you uh, a little while back. You were talking to uh, you were talking about a pit coach who was recruiting you since you were like a freshman, and one of the things you mentioned in that article was you know just kind of your relationship with this coach. And one of the things that he always uh, it kind of jokes with you about is something that I got a lot of uh, comments about when I posted something about you decommitting from Kentucky. Um, that's your thighs, bro. <laughs> your thighs are ridiculous. Like, is that a family trait? Is that something you work really hard on? Is it annoying to constantly talk about them? They, they look silly. <laughs> yeah, um, that's the story of my life, man. I would say in my family, I'm definitely the one that has it the craziest, but it's definitely in the family. I mean, obviously, I work for it. I don't skip leg day at all, but it's definitely a family thing. Yeah, yeah, Quadzilla over here. I saw a clip of you running routes and catching balls. Uh, really impressive, precise routes. Is that something you work on a lot as well? Absolutely. I go down and I train with this dude. His name is DJ out in Georgia, and he gets me right in that factory. He prides himself in making sure all his backs are very versatile and can go out there, run routes, go out the backfield, catch out the backfield. And my receiver coach at my school, Coach Ryan, I mean, he's had me practicing with the receivers since my sophomore year. So, Oh, wow. You practice with the receivers. That's awesome. So yes. being a great running back, uh, obviously you got excellent talent. Great work ethic. The picture that came out when Coach Carlos Lockley, the running back coach at Ohio State, came to visit you, you were wearing a shirt. And I'm going to pull it up here for everybody to see. And the shirt said, outwork everyone. You're clearly a smart dude. Was that intentional or was that just in the rotation? No, it's in the rotation, man. It wasn't intentional <laughs> at all. Does it feel like validation to you for all the hard work you've, you've put in over your career, when you get that offer from a school like Ohio State, a top three program in the history of college football, does it like feel like I've made it? No, it feels great, man. I mean, I was telling my parents, like, if I would have told my little self, like, you'd be getting recruited by Ohio State, I probably wouldn't have believed me. So, like, it's a, it's a great feeling. So Coach Carlos Lachlan, is a, obviously he's new to us. He's a guy that has really impressed us so far, uh, the way he's handling this first recruiting class that he's just kind of walked into uh, has been really great. What is your impression of Coach Locke? Coach Locke is my guy, man. Uh, we started talking when he was at Oregon, but back at Oregon, I mean, obviously that's across the country, so he didn't want to offer me there. As soon as he got to Ohio State, he made it real clear. He called me. I was at school, gave me the offer back in April. And he's a, he's a great dude. I love him. That's awesome. So here in Ohio, we're really familiar with uh, Kentucky, the staff at Kentucky. It's very heavily Ohio influenced. Uh, their recruiting strategy is very much Ohio players. When you committed to Kentucky, what was it that made you want to commit to them? What, what is it that you see in Kentucky that you thought, like, that's where I want to be? Yeah, one of the biggest things that, that made me commit to Kentucky was just that whole factor of playing in the SEC. You know, I've always wanted to play in the SEC up against some of the best of the best. That's one thing that my parents really prided in me. You know, they they would tell me all the time, like, all right, Zay, 
you good in Jersey, but are you good in Florida? Are you good up against some Georgia boys? Are you good up against the other talent around the world? And so I really wanted to be a part of that, you know, play in the SEC. It seems like when Ohio State offered you, you were pretty much immediately, like, very much into Ohio State. What has your opinion been of Ohio State all your life as a, as a kid growing up? I mean, that was one of my dream schools. <laughs> There's no other way to put that. Ohio State has always been highly regarded for me. Absolutely. So you guys came up, you and the family came up and visited pretty quickly, um, stayed over the weekend. Tell us about that visit. It was a great visit. Uh, first person I talked to, we come to the building. I talked to Coach Day, great dude. I feel like he honestly gets a bad rip. I thought he was a really cool guy. He was one of the first co coaches that I talked to that spoke directly to me and not like to my parents. Of course, he toured the facilities. It's amazing. They have everything that you can think of. Um, got to sit down with Coach Locke, a little bit of everything. It was a great visit. I think so. You say Coach Day, you think he gets a bad rap. I mean, this is something I, it's kind of a, a theme I've had for a little while here. Um, but, but I totally agree with you. But it's interesting that you say that, that, that that's like, what is the rap you feel Coach Day gets? That, you know, like, what do you hear? Uh, I feel like I hear that people say he's not the most pleasant guy. You know, I feel like I've heard that he's not like the, the best guy to talk to, but I didn't get that at all. Like, Okay. Okay. That that's interesting. Um, yeah, man. I I really feel like the guy is definitely. Uh, I feel like he's a top notch coach, and uh, this particular season, I think everybody's going to find that out. So you get back from your visit. It's not long after that that it breaks that you have decommitted from Kentucky. Um, what all led into that decision, and how hard was that for you after having a relationship with them all this time? Yeah, it wasn't easy at all. I mean, this is a school that invested in me. They took the time. They took time to recruit me when they didn't have to. And I really appreciated that. So making that phone call wasn't easy. But at the end of the day, I got to do what's best for me. And I feel like it was in my best interest to you know, explore other options. So you still have uh, the official scheduled with or, or the you're officially down to Ohio State and Kentucky. Or is there, are there anybody else that you're considering? It's Ohio State and Kentucky. Okay. Do you know about the time frame and when you're going to make that final decision? I'm looking to do it after my official. So I have my, my June 7th official visit to Kentucky, and then I got June 14th. So I had to add to that. That's on the decision. Have you talked to any of the other guys um, that are in the Ohio State class of 2025? I haven't. I haven't, actually great group of guys i think you're you, well you're not in the class but i think i've had about five of them on the show um i think it's a really special class i'm a huge fan of yours no matter what you choose um i did a show yesterday and i was i was talking about you just yesterday but uh there's nothing like ohio state i wish you a ton of luck on your decision man thank you so much for joining me today and i really appreciate you bud thank you for having me on it's good to be here man that that's a tremendous young man I'm sure you enjoyed the film as much as I did. I hope you enjoy the interview. That's a fantastic young man. And we talk about culture at Ohio State all the time here on the show. It starts with who you go after, who you bring in, and then you mold him when you're there. This is clearly a guy who has a great family life. He talked about it. He was raised right. He's hardworking. He's insightful, respectful. Again, I really hope we're talking to the next book I commit. Hope you guys liked it. Thank you so much to Isaiah. Good luck in your decision, whatever it is. You got a fan over here, and I will see you guys later. Chuck and Bucks out.